First, let me explain what I mean when I say generation. Most people would either assume I meant the games or its lineup of new Pokemon. But in this video, I'm talking about everything. Not just the games and Pokemon, but the anime and even the competitive scene too. When you take all of it into consideration, Gen 6 will always be my favorite. Now, I do understand many of the complaints of the games in this generation. They were the easiest to be released at the time, a trend that's only gotten worse with the newer games. And it had the smallest roster of new Pokemon ever added, at only 72 new entries to the Pokedex, less than half of the generation before it. Those factors, combined with the 3DS's dated graphics, and it being relatively harder to emulate them than the earlier games, leaves X and Y forever doomed to the middle of tier lists, despite how much I think they have to offer. X and Y were the last games to introduce a new type to the franchise, the fairy type, and with it bringing much needed balance to the games. While a new type was one thing to be hyped for, there was one thing that had fans even more excited for its launch. Mega Evolution, Mega Powerful. When holding a Mega Stone, select Pokemon have the power to Mega Evolve. Ever since X and Y, each generation that followed had a gimmick that influenced battle, but nothing will ever top Mega Evolution. The new additions to the Pokédex may have been small, but with Mega Evolution and the game's emphasis on bringing back Pokémon from Kanto, its roster always felt full to me. Mega Evolution also brought a new dynamic to gameplay, making battling competitively the most exciting it had ever been. While they had their weak points, X and Y will always be my favorite games because of one advantage it had over all the other games ever released, a reason I never hear anyone talk about. In 2013, it wasn't possible to data mine 3DS games, at least not yet. That may not sound like a big deal, but you have no idea how huge that is. Sword and Shield were datamined at launch, revealing all of the game's secrets the day it came out. And at the time of me starting to make this video, Legends Arceus is fully leaked and hacked a week before its launch. I cannot understate the impact the 3DS's encryption had on the effect of X and Y. They were also the first Pokemon games to have a worldwide release date, meaning the entire Pokemon community was going into the game blind at the same time for the first time ever. This made for a unique experience that I don't think we'll ever have again. Getting on my computer every day and scouring forums and videos for new secrets hidden in the game was the most fun I had ever had with the franchise. It was kind of nostalgic, bringing back memories of rumors of what the original games had hidden in them, like Mew being beneath a truck. Hunting to find all of the Mega Evolution Stones, and hearing about unknown generations, and trying to find out more about the legendary Pokemon hidden in the game, X and Y had so much to offer. Also, there's still no explanation for this to this day. What the hell is even that? It was such a unique time to play Pokemon. I even remember a game-breaking bug that would stop your game from launching if you saved in a certain part of Lumio City, something I was saved from by a random comment on some video. This is also the time when people used to joke around saying Hoenn confirmed, because at this point no one was sure if Game Freak was continuing the remakes. The hype when Hoenn was actually confirmed was insane. Most people I know would say the third generation is their favorite, and honestly, when it comes down to just the core gameplay, I still think Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are the best ones in the entire franchise. The games may have been an experience that can never be replaced, but it isn't even half of what Gen 6 had. Pokemon XY and Pokemon XY and Z were a complete shift from what the anime had been in the past. Previous generations would have Ash's experience as a trainer reset for newer viewers, but in X and Y he was the strongest he had ever been. Side note, for this part of the video, I'm going to be using the Japanese character names because I watched it sub. I don't mean to be pretentious, but the Pokemon anime isn't like other anime today. Nezuko! No, don't chase him! Pokemon is still heavily edited and localized to the point of being a different show. Greninja, use cut! Reflect, go! Shadow 
Also, the dub was over a month behind the Japanese air dates. So to me, this is Ash, but this is Satoshi. With better animation and Satoshi taking the league more seriously than he ever has, watching the show every week only got more and more exciting. The Tron and Serena were the best companions we had ever gotten, and they got more character development in the first series than any other characters in Pokemon ever had. Eureka was there too, and killed a bunch of people. But that's not important. For the first time since the start of the entire anime, the fans actually thought it was possible that Satoshi might win the league. Near the end of the series when Sun and Moon were already announced, most people were speculating that a trip to Alola was the prize for winning. I was actually so excited that I watched a live stream of the finals when it was airing, which means it had no subtitles. Needless to say, I was a little less than thrilled when Satoshi lost. It still hurts. But it wasn't nearly as bad as saying goodbye to Best Girl. With the world of Pokemon being the most serious it had ever been, I don't even think it's a contest on which generation had the best anime. From its characters to its story, XY and XY and Z completely blow all the other shows out of the water. Now, I did love the anime, but what was honestly my favorite part of this era of Pokemon was the VGC. With the added mechanic of Mega Evolution, Pokemon battles were at their most intense. X and Y were the first time I tried to build a competitive team, and I wasn't the only one. Before the launch of the Pokemon Bank, the game had no hacked Pokemon. This means it was the best time to start playing the game competitively, and it was an experience more fun than I ever thought it would be. I even still have all the Pokemon I trained to this day. All this interest finally came to a head at World Championships 2014. Worlds 2014 had a few fan favorite competitors, but the two that stood out to me were Seijun Park and Jody Azarelli. Seijun Park was a mad lad that had a Pachirisu on his team, and Jody was the moderator for a panda website. If you know, you know. Eventually, they were the two that ended up in the finals. Our boy came out wearing an American flag, and Seijun just had his Pachirisu. I was cheering like a maniac when I saw this. Start for Jody to get rid of it. Yeah, and we do see the Pachirisu. Watching someone go full gigabrain and crack the meta with a choice no one saw coming was a wet dream for anyone who plays any game competitively. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend Wolfie's video on the match. Pachirisu is actually my favorite Pokemon because of this. I think this generation is overlooked for a few reasons that just overshadowed the best parts for some people. The console that made the games harder to hack ended up being what dated them the most, taking away from its replayability. When most people who watch the anime think about it, the first thing they remember is... A move Gekoga could have jumped over. I didn't make this video to hate on the newer generations, or to try to convince anyone to change what their favorite game is. I just wanted to explain why Gen 6 is my favorite. And if you don't agree with my opinion, you're wrong.